Free Star by Gordon Corman, Chapter 29, Chase Ambrose. There are worse things than falling off a roof. Being arrested, for example, being known all over town as the guy who was low enough to rob an old war hero of a medal given to him by the President of the United States. The part that really hurts is what Mr. Solway must think of me now. I stole from a person I respect more than anybody I've ever met. Talk about fate. I was already guilty of the theft before I even started admiring the guy, and I'm absolutely sure he'll never speak to me again. Why should he? I wish I could never speak to me again. While we wait for my hearing in juvenile court, mom keeps me out of school. I like it better that way. I don't have to face everybody and find out how much they despise me. Yeah, sure, they always despise me, but now they've got double reason to. Brendan and Shoshana have even called my house, but mom won't let me talk to anyone. That's on the advice of our lawyer, but it's fine with me. I can only imagine what Shoshana has to say to me, and I don't want to hear it. Anyway, it can't be worse than the things I'm saying to myself. Aaron and Bear tried to call too, probably to thank me for covering for them. Hey, I stole the medal, but those guys have to be considered at least accomplices because of our three-way split agreement. To be honest, I'm not even mad at them anymore. I was just as bad as they are, the ringleader of the whole sick trio. They haven't changed at all. I'm the one who's different. At least I hope I'm different. Besides, I won't have to deal with them anymore after the hearing. I'll probably wind up in juvie. Even when I'm out, chances are their parents won't let them associate with me. I'm a delinquent, a bad influence on them. For all I know, that might actually be the truth. Maybe Aaron and Bear were a couple of angels before they met me. Juvie, there's a really high probability I'm going to end up there. The judge is the same one who sentenced Aaron, Bear, and me to community service, so I can't even say this is my first offense. As for pleading not guilty, it's too late for that. Everybody knows I did it. Mom forgives me, but that doesn't mean much. If you can't expect mercy from your own mother, you might as well throw in the towel. Johnny's come back from college to stand with me at the hearing, which means I'm messing up his life too. The only other people I ever see are dead in his family. Go figure, my stepmother, Corrine, turns out to be my biggest fan at the time when I'm toe jammed to the rest of the world. Not that mom isn't supportive, but she's so scared of what's going to happen to me that her nervousness is making everybody nuts. Corrine is different. First, I'm not her kid, and second, she's not the one who might be going to juvie. She said, so she can be a little less emotional about all this. I have to believe that the judge will be able to see the kind of person you are. I guess I was pretty rotten to you and Helene, I said, you know, before. I don't remember it, but I'm sorry. Never mind that, she replies. Let's focus on how things are now. Helene is only four, so she understands nothing about my problems. Actually, the only time I feel really relaxed these days is when I'm sitting on the floor with her playing Barbies something the old Chase wouldn't have been caught dead doing. I'm pushing Malibu Barbie's beach cruiser, giving Ken a ride in, to the luau, when I notice Dad filming me on, with his phone. I thought playing with a four-year-old interferes with your focus on important things like football, I tell him. Are you kidding, champ? He exclaims. We can show this at your truck. It's a hearing. Whatever. It'll prove to the judge what a big, great big brother you are, and that will get you back in the football field. I sighed. I guess you think I'm a pretty big moron for returning that medal. He actually seemed to mull it over. Well, I'd be lying if I didn't say it would be a lot smarter just to slip it under the Solway's door. Yeah, tell me about it. But you did the right thing, he says. That medal's worthless to you. You didn't earn it, not like the state championship, let's say. It only has value to Mr. Solway. I don't know how valuable it is to him either. He can't remember anything of what he did to win it. He blanked it out the way I blanked out my whole past. Dad shrugged. Even if you can't remember it, it still happened. I love the kid you used to be. I start to protest and he holds up a hand. Let me finish. Just because I miss the old chase doesn't mean I don't appreciate who you are now. I'm not blind. I see the bond you have with Helene. You think that would be possible for your accident? I thought you considered that kind of stuff weakness. He reddens. I just didn't know the new you yet. It takes strength to eat the blame and not rat out Aaron and Bear, especially when they're more, they more than deserve it, or to try to make things right with Solway or even the Weber kid, whether they appreciate it or not. You're strong, all right, and stupid, but everybody has stupid moments. The trick is not to let bad moments cost you the game. There's something in his expression that I've never noticed before. 
It was probably there a lot before the accident, but this is the first time that I actually see it. Pride. This is going to be worth exactly zero in front of the judge. As I step through the metal detector at the courthouse, I freeze. I've been here before, and the memory comes flooding back. Move it along, son, the security guard urges me. Plenty of people in line behind you. Uh, right, sorry. I fumble forward to make room for Mom, Johnny, Dad, and Mr. Landau, our lawyer. I must look a little shaky because my brother whispers, Hang in there, kid. I nod. Wrapped up in my latest flashback, arriving in this very building with Aaron Bear and our families. What I remember the most is my anger, my outrage that the three of us were being hauled into court for booby-trapping Joel's piano. I was mad at everybody. Joel, the Webbers, the school, the police. Didn't they know who I was? Chase Ambrose, MVP of the state championship game? We ruled that school. Whatever we did was okay just because it was us who did it. Yeah, I was mad. I can practically feel the heat of rage radiating through, my, through the memory. What a difference a few months make. Back then, I had such a high opinion of the great Chase Ambrose that I considered myself untouchable. Now it's the opposite. I hate myself so much that there's no way any judge could hate me more. That's why Mr. Landau, Landau has been so frustrated with me. How can you create a defense for someone who won't defend himself? It's not that I want to get sent to juvie. I don't. But I'm 100% guilty. I took the medal. I hid the medal. And if I'd been my old self, I would have sold the medal and pocketed the money. There it is. Whole case. That's probably why Mr. Landau's betting everything on character witnesses. Because I refuse to say anything on my own behalf. I hear my mom drawing a tremulous breath as we enter the courtroom. My dad puts an arm around my shoulders. Believe it or not, I don't even shrug it off. Right now, I need all the support I can get. When I take my first look, I almost lose it. Everybody is here. Brendan and Kimmy are sitting with the video club along with a lot of kids from school. I see Coach Davenport and a group of football players, Joey and Landon with some others. Mrs. DeLeo is there too, along with several of my teachers. In the front row, I'm shocked to find Shoshana, Joel, and their parents. Shoshana catches me looking at her and quickly turns her head. I'm blown away. I already know I'm not the most popular guy in Hiawassee, but the fact that so many people despise me so much that they take time out of the day to come and watch me get sentenced to juvie is the most painful thing I've ever had to face. All this, all that's missing is the stalks so the angry mob can throw rotten vegetables at me. Judge Garfinkel comes in and spends a few moments reviewing the case files while I sit there and stew. Oh, I remember now. He turns his sharp gaze on me. Young man, I told you that if I ever saw you in my courtroom again, things would go very hard on you. What do you have to say for yourself? Mr. Landau starts to get up, and while he's buttoning his jacket, I reply, Nothing, Your Honor. I don't remember why I stole Mr. Solway's medal. I wouldn't do it today, but I definitely did it then. The judge nods gravely. I appreciate your honesty. You're making my job easier, if not any more pleasant. I have some character witnesses who would like to be heard, Mr. Landau announces, if it pleases the court. Judge Garfinkel sighs. Proceed. Mom goes first, dripping enough tears to warp the wood of the witness stand. Her main message is, what a difficult child I used to be and how much I've changed since my accident. She spends a lot of time talking about how seriously injured I was and how long I was unconscious. This comes from Mr. Landau's careful coaching, but Judge Garfinkel looks about as easy to persuade as one of those giant stone heads on Easter Island. That is next, and I'm amazed at some of the things he says. I thought all he cared about was that I'm a chip off the old block, but he only mentions football once. What kid doesn't act like he's got it all figured out when he's Chase's age? Even so, getting to know my son the way he is now, I almost wish someone had pushed me off the roof when I was 13. I'm stunned. The very best part of my father's 48 years was the time he spent in middle and high school. He considers himself to be have been the ultimate athlete, hot shot, and big man on campus. He has never not once allowed for even the remotest possibility that his youth was anything less than perfect. Until today, when he thought it might help me. Dr. Cooperman comes up to confirm that my head trauma was as serious as we say it was. Enough to bring on amnesia and enough to cause the personality change. Judge Garfinkel frowns. And the personality change is permanent? It's impossible to tell, the doctor admits. In many ways, we know more about outer space than we do about the inner work, most workings of the human brain. But there's every reason to believe that Chase is a new person. 
As Dr. Cooperman steps down, the bailiff reads the name of the next character witness, Shoshana Weber. What? I'm frozen in my chair. That had to be a mistake, but no. Shoshana had gotten up and is heading to the stand. I tug on Mr. Lindell's sleeve. No, I is. This character witness thinks I'm subhuman garbage. She's still avoiding eye contact with me, but there's an intense expression on her face. She's a girl on a mission, and I know exactly what the mission is to bury me. She doesn't say anything, just sits there steam building inside of her like a boiler about to explode. Not good. Oh, this is so not good. Miss Weber prompts the judge. I know Chase is guilty, she begins. He's guilty of a lot of things, but he's done a lot of good things too. He's trying, even if he isn't always succeeding. Judge Garfinkel clears his throat. Young lady, the purpose of character witness is to vouch for the character, not to point out faults. I was getting to that part, she tells him. The big question is, what kind of person is Chase going to be now? He gave the middle back. That's a plus. But there are minuses too, like at school when he lied to cover up for old for his old friends. I'm not saying that to make him look bad. I'm trying to say you totally you I'm trying to give you a totally fair picture of Chase today. Thanks to falling off that roof, he's been given a chance to restart his whole life. Maybe it hasn't been perfect. She struggles for the right words. I'm silently pulling for her not to find them. I'm grateful that she doesn't seem to hate me as much as before, but this isn't helping. And the judge prods. I was harder on Chase than anybody, she explains. And some of that was justified and some of it wasn't. I guess what I mean is, if I have faith that he's going to turn out okay, you can take it to the bank. And I'm amazed to say this, but I just know he'll be a good person. Huh? It wasn't the kind of testimony Mr. Landau was hoping for, but it was absolutely honest. For sure, I wasn't expecting to hear the words, good person coming from Shoshana, not when she was talking about me. Don't get me wrong. If the Webers forgave me, that would be a humongous weight lifted off my shoulders. Mostly, though, I'm just confused. This isn't going all at all the way I expected. That's admirable, admirable of you to say, Miss Weber, Judge Garfinkel comments from the bench. But that isn't what this hearing is about. Chase is charged with a thief for the theft of a medal of honor belonging to Mr. Julius Solway, which nobody denies happened, not even Chase himself. But don't you see, she pleaded, if I can misjudge him, anybody can, even a judge. Thank you for your testimony, he tells Shoshana. Let's move along. Would anybody else here like to say something on behalf of this young man? The chorus of squeaking chair backs and shuffled feet is louder than it should be. That's when I realized that every single person in the gallery has gone up across the courtroom in the direction of the witness stand. Kids, teachers, and parents alike. The only occupied seat belongs to my family and Mr. Landau. Everybody else is in line in front of the bewildered bailiff. Video club kids, I know I pushed around in the past. Teachers in classes I used to disrupt. Football players who thought I deserted them. Even Joel and his parents. I stared at them. Practically everyone I know waiting their turn to support the bully. Who deserved no support at all. They nodded encouragingly at me. Wave, flash me thumbs up. The picture doesn't last long. My eyes fill with tears and it's all a blur. I was afraid I might cry at some point during the hearing, but not because of this. This is something I couldn't have imagined in a million centuries. I bite down on the side of my mouth hard, and my vision clears a little. From the bench, Judge Garfinkel gazes at the milling crowd. All right, I get it, he turns to me. This is impressive, and I don't deny that you must have completed an incredible turnaround, but the the serious crime has been committed here, and not a first offense either. Chase, can you guarantee that you're no longer the same person who stole Mr. Solway's medal? I sense salvation so close I can almost reach out and squeeze it. All I have to do is say yes, and I'm off the hook. It's a happier ending than I could have dreamed of, far happier than I have any right to expect, and yet, how do I know I'm 100% different? As the memories continue to trickle back, it's pretty clear that the old me and the new me aren't two separate chases. Can I really claim to be no longer the same person?
Of course, that wouldn't stop me from telling the judge what he wants to hear. It's what the old Chase would do, take the easy way out. Like that time in Dr. Fitzwallace's office. Lie, cheat, say anything to beat the rat. I'd be proving that I haven't changed a bit. Okay, Judge Garfinkel. We'll never know the difference, but I will. And in that instant, I understand that being true to myself is more important than fooling the judge with the power to send me to juvie. I shake my head sadly. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I can't make the guarantee. I feel different. I have no urge to do the things I used to do. But the person who stole the medal was inside me once. I can't promise that he's gone forever. There's almost a win in the courtroom. All those people deflated at the same time. Shoshana, Joel, Brendan, my parents. Judge Garfinkel lets out a heavy breath. In that case, Chase Ambrose, you've left me no choice. It's the decision of this court that you be re that you be remanded to the juvenile authorities. Now hold on just for one cotton-picking minute. And the excitement, nobody noticed that the courtroom doors had flung open. In shuffles, Mr. Julius Solway, war hero, struggling behind his walker. Around the neck of his one and only suit hangs his Medal of Honor, freshly polished and gleaming. The look at his blazing eyes plainly says he intends to take on the world and win. That gets the judge's attention. I assume I'm addressing Mr. Solway. Please take a seat, sir. No, I'm not going to take a seat, Mr. Solway re replies belligerently. All this ruckus, ruckus over a stupid medal. Well, here it is with the rightful owner. Case closed. Now, let's all go home. It's taco night at Portland Street. The judge is, dis is respectful but firm. It doesn't work that way, Mr. Solway. Solway a crime has been committed here, even it, if it now has a satisfactory ending. What crime, Mr. Solway challenges? Chase didn't steal my medal. I loaned it to him. I jump up. Mr. Solway, don't... What do you know about it? The old soldier roars at me. You fell on your head and lost your memory. Who are you going to believe, Judge? The fellow who remembers or the fellow who doesn't? Judge Garfinkel frowns. This may be juvenile court, but it's still a court of law. We deal in the truth and only the truth. The truth is, this is a good kid. How many people do you have to hear it from? Mr. Stol Solway indicates the lineup in front of the witness stand. I'd trust him with my medal any time. Why wouldn't I? Mr. Landau steps forward eagerly. I believe Mr. Solway has introduced reasonable doubt. The judge snorts a laugh at him. Watch it, counsel. I'm not an idiot. His harsh expression softens. However, in light of the incredible show of community support, plus the testimony of a decorated veteran, I'm going to dismiss the charge against Chase Ambrose. He looks me straight in the eye. Don't prove me wrong. I breathe and realize breathing is something I haven't been doing since Mr. Solway, Solway came shuffling through the door. An enormous cheer goes up in the courtroom. I'm hugged, kissed, and high-fived. My hand is pumped to the point where my elbow is jelly. My back is pounded until Dr. Cooperman warns against internal injuries. The football players carry me around on their shoulders. Coach Davenport complains that he hasn't seen this much team spirit all season. There, high above my celebratory supporters, I experience another flashback. It's the state championship from last season, and this is our on-field victory dance. My teammates hoisting the newly crowned MVP up in the air. I slap myself in the face to dispel the memory before I spot Aaron and Bear and spoil it. I'm feeling so many things at the same time. I'm relieved, obviously, but it's also strange to owe so many people such a debt of gratitude. Back on the floor, I say thank you over and over again until my lips and tongue go nub. And when the crowd finally begins to thin out, I realize the last person embracing me isn't my mother, it's Shoshana. We jump apart, but Joel is already standing there pointing and laughing. I guess he's not going in the wood chipper after all, he says to his sister. I look at her questioningly. She turns bright red and mumbles, see you at school tomorrow. She starts to walk away and then turns and echoes Judge Garfinkel's parting words. Chase, don't prove me wrong. Come to think of it, Shoshana would make a pretty good judge. She'd make an even better jury and executioner. I wouldn't want her any other way. When the Webers leave, I'm down to my last thank yous, and this one's the most important. Mr. Solway has established himself in front of the in the front row of the gallery. He's scowling at me. You know, kid, you'd make a lousy lawyer. You almost blew it up there. Mr. Solway, you know you didn't lend me that medal. He shrugs expansively. I would have. Besides, you have amnesia. I'm old. Who remembers? But think where you'd be if I hadn't been able to get a lift over here. Thank you so much. I quaver thinking about how hard it is for him to get around. Don't thank me. Thank her. 
emotions to the back of the courtroom. There, by the door, stands Corinne. One, Corinne, one hand holds onto Helene, the other to the keys of her van. She beams at me. It's funny. When I spoke up at the hospital at the end of the summer, I didn't even know myself, much less anybody else. I hope I never again experience a feeling that lonely. But today, with my entire future at stake, I wasn't alone. The Chase Ambrose I used to be never would have assembled such support. Mom and Dad, Johnny, probably Aaron and Bear, who have been who have to be the worst than anybody as character witnesses, maybe a few more teammates out of obligation. That would have been the sum total of my cheering section. I follow my family out into the steps of the courthouse and take a tremendous lungful of free air. How many people ever get to do get a do over in life? Falling my head was the best thing that ever happened to me. One more chapter. Chapter 30, Brendan Espinoza. It has to be the most credible transformation in the history of middle school. No, not Chase Ambrose going from bully sociopath to human being. Although surely that's up in the top 10. I'm talking about the fact that Kimberly likes me now. I swear, I'm black and blue from pinching myself to make sure I'm not dreaming, but it's 100% legit. I even call her Kimmy. It's like a pet name. Nobody ever calls her that. If that's not the real thing, I don't know what is. It was the first, it was the big fight at Portland Street that did it. When Kimmy saw me fac sacrificing myself and getting the snot knocked out of me, trying to protect her and Aaron, her from Aaron and Bear, that put it over the top. I was like a knight in shining armor, although Kimmy says it's mostly because she was so amazed I wasn't dead. Whatever. Before this, she had trouble remembering my name. Anyway, a bruised jaw is a small price to pay for a girlfriend, especially the most mad awesome one in all of Hiawassee. I'm not even worried that she might go back to her old crush on Chase. It looks like Chase and Shoshana might be starting to turn into something. Not that I'm planning double dates with him anytime soon. No sense playing with fire. Chase played his first football game of the season last weekend and really tore it up, scoring three touchdowns and gaining 180 yards. Shoshana annoyed the crowd by standing in the middle of the bleachers and delivering a long speech about how she isn't a football fan and never intends to become one. Maybe, maybe not. After all, people change. Look at Chase himself or Kimmy or the video club. We know less than foot, less than zero about football, but we got some amazing footage of that game. Coach Davenport liked it so much that he made us the Hurricanes' official videographers. The pet band has a new student musical director, too, Joel Whipper. The players are kind of nice to us now. Well, most of them, anyway. Aaron and Bear are still their usual Neanderthal selves. Then again, everything that happened pretty much exposed these two as the bullies and delinquents they are. Who cares about them? They're kind of outcasts. Chase says even the other Hurricanes pretty much ignore him. Not that those two being losers was ever a newsflash to me. Chase is back in the video club where he belongs. In fact, he's a bigger star there than in football. The word just came in that Warrior took first prize in the National Video Journalism Contest. Chase is a sole winner since Shoshana removed her name from the project when she thought he attacked Joel. Mrs. DeLeo is trying to fix, get that fixed. The vidiots that adopted Mr. Solway as our official mascot, we wanted to make him our official war hero, but he objected to the word hero. He's not too crazy about war either. Well, he may not let us call him our hero, but he's definitely my hero because of what he did in court for Chase that day. But of course, he was a hero long before any of us were born. The United States Army was so convinced of it that they awarded him their very highest honor. Just don't try to ask him about it. I can't remember anything, kid, so don't bug me, he barks in his best crabby old man voice. Talk to Chase. He'll tell you what it's like to blank every, blank something out. Actually, Chase is recalling more and more these days. He's still got a long way to go before his amnesia is totally cured, but every now and then I see him in the school halls, gray in the face and haunted, and I know he's just remembering some horrible thing he did in this formal life. Former life. Poor guy. Maybe one day he'll get used to it. And it won't bother him so much, but I'm not holding my breath. I always thought the purpose of Video Club was to create something so off the chain that it goes viral and makes you famous, but that's not the point at all. The best thing about Video Club is the people you discover along the way. Like... Mr. Solway or Kimmy, you probably never would have no who never would have noticed me otherwise, or Chase, who I spent three quarters of my life being afraid of and now is one of my best friends. Which doesn't mean that you have to give up on the viral part. Kimmy took 
my raw footage from one man band and edited out everything except the part where I'm trapped in the tuba being shot with fire extinguisher foam. Then she posted on YouTube under the title worst tuba fail ever. And it's been already viewed 360,000 times. Unbelievable. I have a viral video. Well, technically it's Kimmy's video since she posted it on her own account and never mentioned my name, not even once. I'm just the doofus in the tuba, wriggling like a hula dancer and foaming at the mouth, but it still counts. It proves anything is possible. Kimmy and me, a YouTube sensation, even Chase Ambrose turning out to be a nice guy. The end.